Well, crap. That's not gonna work. Hold on. This is a very expensive, big ass metal bowl, AKA the Sea Island Forge 30 gallon, 42 inch fire pit. And it is probably the most fun way I have currently in my whole outdoor arsenal to cook outdoors. And it's probably gonna trigger some of you sensitive Sally's out there. Can't wait to hear the bitching in the comments on this one. See, I like to do videos on all kinds of different stuff. Blame it on my ADD, or maybe blame it on my gas. No, not the type of gas that makes you unpopular in an elevator. Gas is in the acronym Gear Acquisition Syndrome. The upside of me acquiring new gear faster than a fat kid double fisting cupcakes is that I find lots of cool shit. Recently, we did the budget EDC video, which was me trying to kind of shed some light on some more budget-minded EDC items for you folks out there that might be a little light on budget these days. I'm gonna go ahead and save a few of you guys some time and me the frustration of the butthurt comments Spoiler alert, this one is not gonna be for the budget-minded crowd out there. So if high price tags make you angrier than the girls from The View at a Jason Aldean concert, just no hard feelings, you might wanna skip this one. But if you don't mind peeling off a few extra Benjamins to get something that I would consider as kinda top of its class, you may wanna hang around because this thing is super cool and it is, like I said, the most fun thing I have to cook on. And lastly, before we get going, I like to do disclosures. I am always honest in my reviews and try to stay as unbiased as possible. Nevertheless, I like to be transparent as I can with you guys, let you guys know about any relationships I have with the companies that are involved in the video so you can formulate your own opinion. Sea Island Forge is sponsoring this video. They also did send me out the grill for review. But other than that, I have no financial affiliation with the company. I don't get kickbacks or any kind of uh, extra money for units sold, nothing like that. Oh, look at that. It's always fun to see when you're getting wood out of the wood pile. You see that snake skin on there? Wonder if he's still in there. <laughs> Even though today we're talking about this as a cooker, at its core, what we got is a fire pit or maybe a fire bowl would be a better description being that it's a bowl. All this stuff can be purchased individually. So if you're not into the grilling aspect and you just need a fire pit for your backyard, you can buy just the fire pit individually. You can bundle the items together. So the more items you buy, the percentage off goes up as more items you put in the bundle. Kind of an a la carte deal, really. For the 30 gallon fire pit, you have a 32 inch bowl, 42 inches across the stand at its widest point by the boot rail. It stands at a height of about 19 inches and weighs in at a hefty 225 pounds. That's right, she is a thick girl. She's thick with like three C's. This fire bowl is a half inch thick cast iron, which is no joke. You should always take care of your gear, of course, but with this thing being as thick as it is, even if you didn't and you just let it sit outside and rust, it would be years or decades before this thing rusts through. I would consider this stuff like heirloom quality stuff. The bowl is a half inch thick and most of the frame is also half inch. The thinnest part of the frame is still one quarter inch thick metal, which makes this thing an absolute freaking unit. If there's ever like a apocalyptic event, meteor strike or something, your best bet on staying this side of the dirt is to hide behind this big bitch because she's thick. The stand is also hot dip galvanized and then painted, so it'll really stand up. Even with people putting their feet on the boot rail and scratching it up, this thing is gonna hold up for years. Even out here in the damn swamp where I live, which is why I'm sweating profusely while we're doing this, this thing ain't gonna rust. Galvanized and then painted, you're good to go. The thickness of this bowl also means that once this fire gets going and this bowl gets good and heated up, it's gonna be really nice at radiating some good heat and keeping your tootsies warm when they're up on the boot rail. They 
put some thought into this boot rail. It's not just there just to be there. They put it at just the right distance. And then the reason it's the spiral is to give it more surface area. So with the extra surface area to help with the dissipating the heat and the distance from the fire bowl, even when this thing is raging, this boot rail never gets too hot for you to put your jiffy feet up on. It also acts as a dipshit buffer. So when this thing gets good and hot, you don't bump into it by accident and brand yourself. Speaking of branding yourself, it's 100 degrees out here and I'm really close to this fire. It's fucking hot. I'm gonna get over here. As fire pits go, this is for sure one of the nicest ones I've ever owned. If all you're looking for is some place to build some fires, hang out with the family, maybe roast some marshmallows, cook some hot dogs on a stick campfire style, this thing will certainly do that for decades to come. But for the cost and build quality of this thing, if that's all you're doing with it, I feel like you're kind of missing out. The grilling aspect and all the cooking accessories and whatnot that go with this thing is where this thing really starts to come into its own. It's where it really starts to get interesting and for me, starts to justify the price of the system. My favorite and the one that people probably use the most often is the grill attachment. This thing changes the game. You're going from Boy Scout to Iron Chef. It has a 24.5 inch diameter cooking surface, which is a couple inches bigger than your standard Weber. And if you don't think a couple extra inches makes a big difference, she's been lying to you. That comes out to 3.3 square feet of cooking surface, all with a stainless steel expanded steel grate, which is very generous. A couple weeks ago, I grilled, I think it was about 80 wings on this thing all at one time, just kind of for a size comparison. And I really do prefer the expanded steel type of grate over just the bars. It makes it so when you're doing vegetables or smaller stuff, shit's not always falling through. It has 14 inches of up and down travel, which you can very easily do because of the ratcheting system it used and a very nice ash wood handle so you don't burn your hands while you're moving the grill around. I am not exaggerating when I say this is my favorite grill to cook on. Now, don't get it twisted. I'm not saying that I can cook a brisket on this thing better than I can on my mill scale. I'm not saying I can cook a better smash burger on this thing than I can on my flat rock. I'm saying this is the most enjoyable grill I have to cook on by far, the most fun. Big Al also loves this damn thing. But since we've got this, every time we go to cook something outside, she's like, hey man, you wanna cook it on the fire pit? Now, of course, she likes sitting around sipping on a beverage while I'm leaning over the thing sweating my ass off. But nevertheless, I think it's just in general a more enjoyable thing to hang out around and make cooking more of kind of a social affair. There's also just something kind of more primal and fun about cooking on a fire. It's kind of like when you go camping, it's always fun. It's a really clever design too, because it basically turns your fire pit into kind of like a little Santa Maria grill, if you know what a Santa Maria grill is. It's kind of like a little round Santa Maria. The way it allows you to easily rotate the grate and raise it and lower it makes cooking way more versatile and easy to use. Fire gets a little too hot, boom, you raise it up, done. You need to sear something, maybe crisp up some chicken skin on a little higher heat. You lower it right down, Bob's your uncle. It also allows you to do all kinds of different grilling. So you can have the grill grate down kind of low with a nice bed of coals and do kind of what you would consider standard grilling, hot dogs, hamburgers, chicken, stuff like that. Or you can raise it up, keep it further away from the heat so it cooks a little slower and get a little more smoke flavor in your food. Kind of more of like a direct heat smoker style kind of cook, especially with the dome you can put on top, which, which wait a second, hold on. With the dome, another cool accessory a 22 inch food grade stainless steel dome with an ash handle, has a thermometer with a temperature range of 150 to 750 degrees and a vent on top that helps you control the smoke and heat. It also very handily stores right there, right in between the boot rail and the grill. So when you're cooking on it, you need to take it off, check your food, pop it right there, good to go. With the grill grate and the dome, it really does make this kind of a compelling argument for people who want like a one and done cooker because you can do so many different kinds of cooks on it. So if like maybe you don't want a bunch of grills in your backyard or maybe you have limited space, very possibly could be your best option for an all purpose cooker. You can uh, twist the grate over to the side, put the dome on it, push your coals over to one side, do your traditional kind of offset cook, raise it up really high, but directly over the coals with the dome and kind of do like we were talking about that direct heat smoker kind of situation. You can cook with straight charcoal, you can cook with wood, or what I normally do is I put like one chimney full of charcoal in there to get a good coal bed started. And then I start putting wood on there to kind of increase the smoke flavor and 
replenish the coal bed as it starts to wear out. Kind of a dealer's choice. Whatever tickles your pickle, which is part of one of the things I really dig about the grill. And two things I didn't even think about until after I used this thing was A, because you can raise that grill up so great up so easily, it's very easy to add logs, tend to your fire, do whatever you have to do, unlike other grills where you gotta move the grate out of the way. Hell, with the green egg, if you misjudge your fucking amount of fuel, you gotta take half the thing apart to get in to add more stuff to it. It's also kind of nice that if you raise it up, you can kind of see underneath and check how the bottom of your meat's looking without even turning it. So. Pretty cool little features I didn't even think about until after I used the thing a little bit. The last accessory that I currently own that we're gonna talk about is this little guy, the Sidekick, which is a cool little deal. Basically a quarter inch thick, six inch wide, 12 inch long piece of steel with holes in it. Has a nice stay cool handle so you don't burn yourself as it gets hot. Gives you a cool spot for a pot, a skillet, a coffee cup, coffee pot. You're only limited by your imagination. Anything that you need something to set on, have it close to the fire and heat up, this is your little dude. It can be used by itself or in conjunction with your grill. Like you could put your grill on there, maybe put a pan on this and it would catch your drippings from your meat if you wanted to make a gravy or a sauce or something. Also, it's heavy as hell and uh, you could use it as a uh, impact device if somebody were to try to raid your house while you're out here. You could do some damage with this thing, seriously. There are also several other attachments that I don't currently own, so we're not gonna talk about them because I have not used them, but they have like a tabletop that you can put over this. So uh, when you're not using it, you can use it as a table. There's a, a paella, I think it's called, that goes on there. There's a griddle attachment. Lots of other stuff. Maybe one day I'll get those and we'll do another little update of some handy attachments they have. I think the versatility is probably, well, the versatility and the, the quality of all this stuff, I think is the main thing that's really kind of impressed me with this grill. Most of that stems from the fact that this damn bowl is heavy duty. If you tried to attach all these attachments on other types of fire bowls that I've seen, it would bend the lip all up or it would tilt and tip the whole damn grill over. But this big 225 pound bitch ain't going nowhere, which is kind of what allows you to very easily within like minutes just slap on and off all these different accessories, which is kind of the thing that I really dig about it. Okay, okay, Jeremy, you've been singing the damn praises of this thing for like 10 minutes, you damn shill. I can already hear it in the comments. I know you people on the internet just love calling people shills. It's like your favorite thing to do. I don't even think you know what the word shill means. You just say it because you heard somebody else say it at one point. Yeah, well, you know, that's just like, uh your opinion, man. The old interwebs are really gonna hate me because the cons list on this thing is unfortunately pretty anemic, but nothing's perfect. So I'll give you guys a couple little nitpicks to keep the trolls at bay. First and the most obvious is the price. This thing is not cheap. The fire pit on its own is just kissing 3000 right in the ass. Then by the time you add on your grill and your dome and your poker sidekick and all your other accessories, you can easily get this thing up around that $3,800 mark pretty quick, even with the fact that it, it, by the time you've added those on with your discounts, you're saving about $500, it's still not too far off of 4K at that point. And it is kind of brutal to cook on when it's hot outside because it does put off a lot of heat, which is gonna be a positive when the weather's cool, but when it's hot, it does pump off a lot of heat and does make it a little spicy to cook on. But that's not really the fault of the cooker, that's just the nature of cooking on fire. It has been hotter than the devil's butthole on $2 taco night, and I'm telling you, the last month testing this thing in 100 plus degree heat, it has not been all rainbows and puppies. It has been hot. I need some damn electrolytes or something. Dehydrated over here. There is a small hole in the very bottom for water to drain out of. So when it rains, it doesn't end up uh, as a small pond. And sometimes if you've had a fire in it, and you haven't cleaned it out, the ash and little bits of wood can clog that hole, which causes it to fill with water. Then you kind of have to take a stick and poke around at the hole. <laughs> That's what she said until you can open it up so the water can drain out. I'm trying here, guys, I promise. So basically, it's a little pricey. It's a little hot to cook on when it's warm outside. And if you don't clean it out before it rains, you gotta poke around on the bottom to find the hole like a teenager on prom night. But other than that, it's kind of one of those you get what you pay for kind of situations. It's really well built, made here in the USA by a family owned business. It's high quality stuff and 
there's just not a whole bunch on the cons list. So my final thoughts, because of the cost, I definitely know this thing is not gonna be for everybody. But if the budget doesn't make it a non-starter for you and you're like my family and you cook outdoors 90% of the year, then I think it's a solid investment. And because of the build quality, this thing's gonna be around forever and your kids will be fighting over who gets it once your tits up. Gotta end things on a nice, happy note. <laughs> <laughs> As always, folks, I will include any links or discount codes. I don't think I don't think I have a discount code for this, but if I do, I'll put it down below. I'll definitely put the links and all that stuff down below for your clicking pleasure. All right, folks, we are losing light fast. So before we jump off, let me do the drawing from the last video. We're giving away one of my new, the new drop we just did, the cigar scissors, but they are a limited run. So if you're interested in them, there'll be links down below so you can go grab them. Cause once those are gone, they're gone. We'll probably come out with a different version at some point, but the Damascus, brass Damascus ones and stuff, once those are gone, we're not gonna do those again. So if you're interested in getting those, definitely check out the link below, but we're gonna give away a pair. Old random comment picker and go. And the winner is Outdoors with Big Joe. Well, Big Joe, congratulations. You have a pretty sweet ass pair of cigar scissors coming your way, if I don't say so myself. Big Joe says, I think I found my Christmas gift to myself this year. This was the video where we did the uh, blind barrels, which is the blind tasting stuff. Would be a very good Christmas present. It's definitely going on my Christmas gift guide for guys this year. Great, great gift. Congratulations, buddy. Thanks for being a subscriber, listening, liking, commenting, all that good stuff. We will be contacting you down below and asking you to send us an email so we can get your details. Now, before we do this week's giveaway, our weekly scammer warning, we announce winners live on the videos. So if somebody comments you down below and says you won something and you didn't see me announce your name live, it's a scam. Don't fall for that shit. What do we want to give away this week? Let's, this week, let's do, um, we got these new shirts. You can barely see them now, and it's been in the whole video, but it's dark now, you can barely see it, but it's whiskey, cigars, guns, and freedom. We just came out with these. We will give away one of these uh, in the next video. So rules to enter the giveaway are, as always, you have to be a subscriber to both channels, both this channel and the After Hours channel. So you gotta be a subscriber to both channels. You gotta smash that like button. And we're gonna add one more thing in. We just redid our website, and now we have a monthly newsletter. So you've gotta sign up for our newsletter. I'll have a link down below. Go to our website and sign up. We will not spam you. We won't give away your content. And I think I'm only probably going to put out like one or two emails a month. And it's basically going to be on like drops that are coming, videos that are coming, cool stuff like that. So it'll just kind of keep you up to date on everything. So sign up for the newsletter and then comment down below this week. Let's do hashtag freedom shirt and hashtag cook outdoors. So do all those things that'll enter you in the giveaway. And next week we will draw a winner live and give away one of these new shirts. It's getting dark as hell out here. So I'm going to hang out, have a cigar by the fire and enjoy the rest of this evening. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Big thank you to the guys at Sea Island Forge for getting this over to me to check out. It is super sweet. If you did like this video, feel free to smash that like button. That always helps us out. If you're not a subscriber, please consider doing so. We'd love to have you on board. Hope everybody is having a fantastic week and we will see you in the next video.